Have you always wondered how I let my plants adapt to a semi-hydroponic setup or just looking for an easy way to do so? Well, then this is your video. So let's go. Hello and welcome to the Orchid Saga. My name is Ilkian Wiesma, also known as EJ. So yes, I uh, finally did make uh, basically an upgrade of a video that I did uh, quite a few years back. That was uh, how I transitioned my uh, plants into a semi-hydroponic setup. Even though that video is really taking off, at least for my channel, for my uh, videos, uh, I still wanted to make a new one. A shorter one, uh, I think, um, easier. I just narrowed it down to six easy steps. Plus, my English is a little bit better, and I think all overall it will be a little bit easier to watch. So it's basically an update. Uh, like I said, we will follow on six easy steps and uh, to transition our plants in a semi-hydroponic setup. Therefore, I chose this one. It's a new uh, uh, plant. It's a fail, as you can see. And uh, I chose a fail because, uh, believe it or not, that was for me the most difficult orchid to get uh, really going in a uh, semi-hydroponic setup. And so that's, I figured it out eventually how to get them going. And now, as you can see, they do very well for me. But yeah, the fails were very, very difficult. If you ask me on forehand, I would say that a Miltoniopsis would be the most difficult one. Well, nothing like these. These were very hard to get going. A Miltoniopsis actually is fairly easy if you ask me in comparison to a fail. Uh, I don't know exactly why, but yeah. The clue is the right moment and uh, follow on uh, some steps that I figured out over the years, like I said. So like I also said, is I narrow it down to six easy steps. We're going to follow this one. And uh, so, yeah, let's let's start with step one. <laughs> so, yes, yeah, step one is uh, basically a step I would suggest anybody uh, growing orchids. So it doesn't matter in which uh, media you use or which setup. Just uh, do a pest spray, because most of the times we have no idea where these orchids come from, what they have been through, what they may pick up on the way, so pests or any other disease, diseases, you never know. But for pests, we can uh, use a spray. So if there are some on there, you uh, will kill them and not uh, let them multiply into your collection. Uh, so that's what I, I step one. It's very important. It's easy, but it's very important. So I do that with every single orchid, every new orchid that I do get in my collection. And for those with eyes uh, for detail in the videos, yes, you guys, this is not a vi the plant that I was showing in the intro of this video because I lost the footage. The next steps, you will see the, uh, the actual orchids that we are going to follow. But yeah, I just needed some uh, footage just to explain this step. Like I said, I'm doing it with every other orchid that I do get, so it's not that uh, difficult. And um, yeah, like I said, I lost the footage. But that is step one. So yes, yeah, step two, you guys, welcome. Uh, we are going to clean up the root system. And therefore you might uh, wanna wear some gloves you probably need some scissors, for example, to cut off old roots. And I like to sterilize my tools in between with alcohol. And I do have a bottle of hydrogen peroxide just to clean up the root system afterwards, after we did take off the media of the arc. And then we can uh, start growing this again in this environment with the good bacteria, etc. But you never know what's in there. So I do personally like the hydrogen peroxide to get uh, rid of any uh, bad bacteria and block snails, for example. So anyhow, here's the orchids. So let's uh, have a look. Uh, like I said, we have a beautiful root here. So uh, now we need to clean it up and obviously therefore we need to take it out of the pot. And let's do that first, just slowly uh, getting it out of there. As you can see, there it goes. Some root is a little bit stuck as it appears to the pot. And there it comes out. And that was a whole section of moss with not any root in there. So yeah, but that's okay. 
uh, I uh, like to save the tag. I'm going to make my own tags, but uh, so I'm just uh, putting that aside so we don't mix up our kits. And I might speed this up, and I'm not sure. I don't want to make this too long because I have my reporting videos on my channel if you're more interested in how I clean it up, but fairly basically. So I, I'm going to do that first. So yes, you guys, I hope you enjoyed it. a little bit of music in here. Just speed it up. Sometimes uh, it can take uh, a few uh, minutes to even uh, up an hour or two to clean up the root systems. Uh, luckily, this one ha doesn't have a big one yet to start with. But that's, uh, yeah, it may take a while and take your time because you don't want to damage too much of the roots. But this is uh, what we are left with. And you see maybe some pieces of moss still that are on the teeny tiny pieces on the roots. I'm not going to take those off. Those will not hurt the plant. So, uh, so we have a nice, uh, nice root system. And also you want to look for old dead roots. Now uh, is the time to cut them off if you need to. But yeah, maybe here, like this, this part, as you can see, I'm moving it now. That one is dead. It's completely dried up. So uh, like I said, this is the time. We now have it out of the pot. Let me uh, get rid of that uh, root very quickly. Let me check if there are more. No, that was a piece of moss. So yeah, this looks fine. So I'm going to put them all moss to the sides. And um, yeah, to be honest, in my experience, it is just a little bit easier most of the times to let uh, the bit, uh, a bit younger orchids adapt to a new system. Uh, because if you imagine if you have an older orchid and it has a, a heck of a, a root system, most of the roots will, uh, who are already on there will have a very difficult time to adjust to the new setup. With orchids that's fairly young, most of the times do not have that root system yet. So the new roots are adjusting just a little bit easier. Process is exactly the same. So uh, with every orchid, uh, today, uh, like I said, we did uh, use a, a Phenoliopsis, but if it's a young plant or an old plant or a different Nonsidium uh, Odontoglossum cattleya, it's all the same. Six easy steps and you should be fine. So let's uh, grab the hydrogen peroxide, like I uh, mentioned earlier on, and just spraying the root system in between the roots. Try to cover all of the bits and pieces over there. You never know what's in there. Like I said, I'm basically want to start from scratch. Stretch. Scratch. I have some difficulties today <laughs> talking, but uh, yeah, from scratch. From zero. So here we go. There, as you can see, there's quite some water drops on there. That's all hydrogen peroxide. Maybe you can hear it sizzling. I'm not sure. I'm not completely sure if the camera, uh, the microphone does take it. But anyhow, you should hear some some sizzling noise. That's uh, that means that the hydrogen peroxide is doing its job. So that uh, I will leave there for a few minutes, uh, let's say five minutes, and then uh, we should be fine to. Uh, continue with uh, step three. So you guys, we are uh, up to step three already, and that is uh, choosing the right media and the right pot size. So um, first of all, you should know uh, that it doesn't really matter the pot size because this, it, it's all about the system and the system works the same in uh, when you have a smaller pot or a bigger pot. It's all about the wicking effect of the inorganic media, which we will talk about uh, in a second. So it doesn't really matter if you have a smaller pot or uh, bigger, because like I said, it's, it's, the, it's about the system. So the wicking will uh, make sure that every root will be in contact of the moisture of, of, the, of the water you put in there. So yeah, it really doesn't matter that much. But to me personally, uh, it does matter a little bit, and that's more because it, I think it does look better if you have a fairly small orchid in a small pot instead of a, such a large pot. 
So therefore, uh, I like to start with, in this case, with a 12 centimeter pot. But yeah, that's, so that's, that doesn't matter as much. But I, uh, like I said, I'm going to choose for the 12 centimeter pot. And uh, let's talk about the media. Well, if you're longer on my channel, you probably know that I really love my pumice. So I, I'm going to use the, the bigger pumice this time. But I also have the smaller pumice. Like this stuff. As you can see, if you compare it with, whoops, with this one, you can see uh, the difference there very clearly. So in generally speaking, like uh, also with uh, the more uh, organic media, if an orchid has a thicker, bigger roots, you probably want to use a bigger media to get more air in there. And uh, with the smaller uh, roots, like an Oncidium, uh, Miltoniopsis, for example, you would like... Uh, probably would go for the more smaller pumice over here. So yeah, we all probably know that a fell uh, does have fairly thick roots, so I'm going to stick with the, the uh, thicker pumice. And um, I should mention that I also like to use, if I need a moss, I like to use the Cintiq. So that is the more uh, inorganic moss version. But I don't use it for, um, for these uh, for the fails, because I'm sorry for the noise, because those like the air gaps in there. But if for a Miltoniopsis, for example, it loves uh, Cintiq, and then I sh should be able to use also the bigger uh, uh, pumice be because the the Cintiq will keep it wetter. But that's for an, uh, for a more detail. So if you want to know more about uh, about that, please leave a comment uh, in the comment section. For today, like I said, we're going to stick with the big pumice. So. Um, we chose our pot, we chose our uh, uh, media, so it's time to uh, pot up our orchids. So yeah, of course, I should mention these guys, you will see these a lot of my pots. I call these uh, water meters, so they give an in indication of the level of the water. Let me uh, get that red stick out, did you see it? Yeah, that's the indicator. Uh, but yeah, like I said, I'm calling them water meters. It's a gouache, gouache, I think something. Uh, it's, it probably do not pronounce it right, but uh, for us in my, uh, my country, it would be uh, called a water meter. So this will uh, give the indication of the level of the reservoir, so how much water is in there. And yes, you guys, it's very, very handy, especially if you have, a, <laughs> if you have quite a collection. I have about 450 orchids and I think 80, 85% is in self-watering. So I have a lot of uh, orchids in self-watering set up. So yeah, these indicators are perfect. I can just see very quickly if they need water or not. And this one should need water now because it's low. <laughs> but anyhow, I'm putting it in. So this is optional. You don't have uh, to use these uh, things, but I like to use them. And uh, if you use them, you need to put them in first so you don't get media stuck in there underneath the uh, water meter. So that's that and I'm going to get rid of my gloves quickly because they uh, are a bit annoying <laughs> and everything should be clean now so but I don't really don't uh, like wearing gloves. Anyhow uh, I'm going to check my orchid. It doesn't have very long roots yet as you can see so I'm going to put in a first layer of media and also I'm doing this. Let me get it out so you can better see it. Uh, I have just one, one layer, as you can see, of media. And this you want to do as well to keep preventing the old roots touching the, uh, the reservoir. Because those are not adapted, uh, of course. They've been uh, growing in moss in this case. So you don't want to put them directly in the reservoir. And if the orchid uh, does choose to uh, start growing roots into the reservoir, that's okay. Because those roots are adapting to the system. But uh, from, from the start, you don't want to put them in your shelf. So let the orchid choose on its own if it want to grow some roots in the reservoir. So that's said and done. I'm now trying to uh, position it as nicely as I can inside of the pot. And you see, it does look so much better than when I would put this in a, a very large pot. If you ask me, it's a personal taste, of course. But good to know, you can uh, choose. Bigger or smaller. So I'm going to fill up, of course, let me uh, do it like this so you can uh, hopefully see what I'm doing a bit better <laughs> with this camera. Here we go. 
just filling it up and then just slowly let those pebbles fall into the pot. Not pushing anything because you don't want to damage that root, that root tip and uh, the other roots as well. As less as I can. They are always a little bit stressed and you can barely avoid it. You will damage them a little bit and that's why we always suggest to repot when they are in active growth. The stress and the damage most of the time is a little uh, less than when you uh, start when they are not in active growth. So that's why uh, why we suggest that. Oh, funny enough, look at this. I didn't plan on this, but look, that's beautiful. I try to always put some of the arc, uh, some of, I'm sorry, some of the roots that are growing on the outside of the pot, so we can see them grow. And that is what we want, obviously. But I'm just checking if we have some air gaps, gaps with a fell, like here, for example. And we have a few here. That's okay. They actually love it. So you don't want to overdo it, but a little bit of extra air is not the end of the world. But you can tap your pots like this. And let's see what the change. Not that much. Because it's, uh, this doesn't have much of a big root system, so that the, uh, the uh, actual pumice can uh, fall in the pot fairly easily. So that's nice, but you can adjust it if you need it. If you tap it and the media falls down a little bit further, just put some new one in there, of course. So that is that. Now I'm going to grab some uh, pebbles. I like to use the pebbles. It does look nice, I think, just the top layer of pebbles, and it also helps with the top dry layer. So if you don't know what it means, that it's literally the, the top layer of your pot, about one or two centimeters, might dry up, especially in summer, So uh, because the evaporation of the water is quicker up here, because it's warm, probably quite some light, and to avoid that, we do put a uh, layer of pebbles on there. And personally, I like the look of it. So for these Small pots, to be honest, I don't often have a uh, top dry layer. It can happen on very warm days, but not that much. But still, I use the pebbles because I like it. It it's, looks nice when you have a more even setup, I think, personally. Personal taste, of course. <laughs> but anyhow, so that is that. And obviously, uh, I didn't mention it, but you can choose uh, the media of your liking. You don't need to use pumice, but I love pumice, but you can use Lekka or Lika, depends on uh, where you're living, uh, how it's pronounced, but you can also use Ceramis, but personally I even hate Ceramis more than I do Lekka. Uh, the pumice, I never had troubles with new roots touching the top layer of the pumice, even though they might be a bit dry, uh, you cannot avoid it, even you have some pebbles on there, but with Lekka I saw a lot of uh, root uh, tip die back, as you recall, so the roots wouldn't uh, start growing. They, they try and they die off, and then they try and they die off. So therefore I stopped using Lekka. It felt very salty, even though I washed it and I did everything I should do, it didn't work for me. And this farmers I can get very easily, I, I don't wash it. I'd use it straight out of the bag. It has a little bit of dust on it, but very noticeable. So uh, it's perfect, if you ask me. I, I absolutely love it. So that's why you see me use pumice. So anyhow, you guys, we are now uh, ready uh, for this one. It's potted up. And uh, what I like to do in this state as, as a last thing, well, two things. I first need, uh, I also need uh, to make a name, an, uh, a name tag. <laughs> And I like to give it a flush with RO water and some seaweed in it. So let's uh, do that. And then uh, we completed this step as well already. <laughs> so yes, you guys, welcome to my uh, sink over here. Uh, I have the luxury to have a uh, kitchen, an old kitchen uh, inside of my growing room. So I have all uh, my uh, room installed for my orchids, my orchid fertilizers and uh, additives. This is one of them. This is the Alga Mic. And I do have videos on my uh, products that I like to use. This is one of them, just uh, for the hormones to get uh, the orchid uh, settled in the new setup a bit easier, a bit quicker, and really start stimulating a uh, new root growth. That's where the kelp or algae is for, uh, algae mix. 
what's it called actually <laughs> but I just wanted to show you guys that you really need a teeny tiny bit just a drip on two liters of, of water so here we go that's it just a teeny tiny amount I hope you can see it it's just uh, like I said a very small amount so I'm going to fill this up with our water and then we're going to flush the orchids so and of course you want to stir it a little bit make sure it's really nice settled in there throughout the water and not leaking on uh, the bottom or something like that you want to really mix it in and then of course you're going to grab our orchids isn't she looking pretty absolutely it already looks nice i really uh, like the look of pumice and the stones better than uh, moss to be honest but and then we uh, anyhow we're going to take uh, the water can and just flush flush it and you don't see me do this often only with new orchids i do not flush but uh, in this case i do and you see probably no i'm not sure if you can see it but there's a little bit of dust coming off and it's more of the pebbles themselves than the actual pumice but that's okay it's it's all inorganic and it doesn't uh, doesn't mix in with the with the growing process or in some way or form with the orchid itself it's just a little bit of dust sand you could say something like that a residue whatever you want to call it there i am <laughs> so let's grab the pot here we have it put it in there it's just nice and damp not wet but it's damp so uh, and uh, we're going to put it in there and i'm going to make this one a beautiful tag to go with this beautiful pot <laughs> So yes, you guys, quick tip here. It's very easy, but can be uh, very beneficial. If you're going to look again at that root, with that beautiful green tip over here, it might be uh, handy to just mark that spot, just underneath that root. So we have a nice indication if that root is continuing to grow or not. So if it uh, continues, it will obviously be over here, and it will uh, cross the border of that uh, just line we just drew there. So I thought, yeah, I'm going to include it as well because it's uh, easy and simple and it might uh, be very uh, beneficial. <laughs> so there she is. I did uh, put uh, her over here on the shelf. I like to put my new uh, orchids over here in this section. So I have them nicely together. It's a bit more easier for watering um, because they need to be watered a little bit more differently. But I just wanted to show you the beautiful tag over here. And there uh, is the beautiful orchids. So yeah, I really, uh, once again, like really like this uh, this pot size. Anyhow, we just saw the, in the back there that new roots, that is this one. And, uh, well, it at least needs uh, a week up to two weeks. Let's say two weeks, you should be fine. If it then still has that green root tip, it probably is getting a little bit bigger. But uh, if it still has those green uh, root tips, or at least one of them, you can transition it. You can start filling up the reservoir. So, uh, yeah, of course, in between it needs water, uh, and that is the next step. So let me uh, demonstrate how I water them in between the actual adaptation. So, yes, welcome by step five. And that was, for me personally, the most difficult one by far. And that is how to water your not adapted plant yet. So... Uh, Sometimes, if everything goes well, your plant, your just repotted plant, will adapt to the new system very easily. That doesn't happen often, but I had a few that just took off, like, like uh, they were very happy with the new setup, and they just started out growing new roots, and there was no diff difficulties whatsoever. But most of them didn't, and at least needed two weeks to uh, start growing those new roots again, but most of them uh, needed even a few more weeks. And sometimes it can go up to several weeks, so above, above 10 weeks, 11, 12, something like that. The easiest thing is you just have to wait. You have to just to see uh, what your roots are doing. So that's why it's very handy to have a few on the side of your pots so you can uh, see what they are doing. And you just have to repeat this process until those roots start to grow. So yeah, how do you do that? How do you water them? You don't want to overwater them, of course. These plants are already stressed because you have to repot them, etc. Well, 
it's basically sort of kind of the same as I watered my plants when I did grow them in bark and sphagnum moss. Mostly I did grow in uh, bark before uh, this setup, so that's seven, eight years ago, something like that. But anyhow, basically you're mimicking that uh, same setup again, that wet and dry setup as we used to uh, when they were growing in bark or sphagnum moss, for example. So you want to uh, repeat that because that is what this plant is used to. So uh, that will not start your roots to rot. And that is what we want, of course, because we, we are want to wait until those new roots come or the new branches, etc. Because those roots, those roots will uh, adapt to the system. And at okay. this stage, I still use only RO water with some seaweed. Just a little bit, like we saw, I still use the same the system. water. So I just watered it, and um, with a fowl, it's very easily easy to see. Let me put it down quickly, because if your roots start to green up, like uh, this one, as you can see, it is uh, watered sufficiently, and that's enough. And it depends on where you live. Maybe you need to repeat this, uh, this process, so to speak. Uh, again in three or four days, maybe a week, maybe earlier. It just depends. But just keep an eye on. I don't know. I cannot give you the answer to that. So that's why I describe the different situations. But that's something you keep in mind uh, while you are transitioning your plants into this system. For me, it really depends on which time of year it is. If it's, it's summer here in the greenhouse, they uh, dry up within uh, one or two days. But now it's spring, or well, we're heading to spring, I should say, it's not spring yet. But um, So therefore it's, it's a bit colder, humidity is fairly high, so I only have to do this every four to five days, something like that. And I, like I said, I'm just repeating this until I see new roots growing in the, in the pot. So I don't know at this stage how long it will take. I think it will not take that long because this one already has growing root tips. So that's why that is very handy and you should repot when they have new uh, roots growing. But anyhow, just wait until you see those new roots. And then uh, if those start to grow, we are ready for the last step and that's step six. And before we go into the last step, I just wanted to show you where I do adapt my plants, my fairly new ones, and it's over in this corner of the greenhouse. I obviously have a light above them, but they, in this corner they do not get that much direct daylight because you don't want to stress them. So that's an extra tip. Just give them a little bit of light, sufficient enough, but not necessarily the amount of light they use, they kind of need. Just keep it a little bit lower. You don't want to stress them because if you give them extra light and these are, uh, this one is stressed because we did a repotting, etc., it's still adapting. Just keep it slow. Give it, give it enough light, but keep it slow on the light levels. Keep it down, I should say. So that's uh, what I wanted to mention as well. That's very important as well. Because extra light, believe it or not, is stress for them. So too much is, is not going to be very beneficial. Actually, the opposite. <laughs> so keep it low in this stage. In yes, you guys, finally, step six is just creating the reservoir because your plant is ready. It's uh, ready to uh, be fully adapted to a uh, semi-hydroponic uh, setup. And uh, that's great, obviously, because that was the goal. So uh, let's, uh, let's have a look because obviously we just did step five. We just watered it and uh, it doesn't matter how many weeks it, it did take. Maybe a few, maybe a few more, but anyhow, we are there. We also did uh, take a mark on a pot and that will be the indicator if we can fill up the reservoir if this plant is ready to be uh, uh, getting a reservoir. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to take it out and here is that uh, cable tie that I like so much with these pots because I just can tilt it like this out of the pot. It's very easy to get it out. Let me put the outer pot over here so we can have a close-up. Is this really ready or not? Let's see. Well. So yeah, let's see, uh, here is that mark we did with a marker over there. And look at that, the root is passing. So this is obviously growing, you guys. So this is uh, ready to be fully adapted 
to the system. This will make uh, or become a uh, water route, so to speak. So we're going to take advantage of that. And um, we have a good route over here that is currently not completely sure. It's not very green, so I don't think that is growing. But at least we have one and we have some green roots just next to it. I'm just doing the pots. Sorry for the glare there, but these still look healthy. I'm not sure how those will behave, but that doesn't matter because this one will definitely take over. And it looks like it's going straight for that rain far, but I'm not sure. I think uh, it may take a turn somewhere. Who knows? But it can grow in the reservoir. It's not a problem, but you never know, of course. So yes, uh, let's uh, let's uh, fill up the reservoir. Let's create a reservoir for this one because it's ready. <laughs> so and of course, before I'm going to uh, get this a reservoir, this plant is now ready to go uh, on uh, on the wall, on the fail wall, join the fails. Of course, so uh, it had the lower light levels as we just saw, and now it uh, will get a little bit more because it's on this side of the greenhouse, a little bit more daylight. But I did make a uh, nice uh, spot over here, so here it can start enjoying uh, her new uh, life. It probably will stay there, but at least, of course, uh, somewhere on a fail wall. So uh, let's uh, give her a reservoir, and uh, hopefully uh, she will enjoy that spot as well. So yes, at this stage, uh, like uh, we discussed, we're going to make a reservoir and keep an eye on my water meter. There will be a red, red I'm sorry, red uh, sticky point coming out, and that will give the indication of the level of water which is in there. A nice, uh, I keep it, I keep calling it water meters, it's just an indicator of the level of water. There it goes. You see, very easy. Just a little bit more. Sometimes they do get a little bit stuck. Yeah, there it was. So I just like to tap it from time to time just to see if it bounces back like this one. I hope you can see that. Then I know there's definitely enough water in there. And that's uh, how I, I easily, I think, uh, create a uh, nice balanced level of water in this pot. And yes, of course, you guys, I know at this point I need to mention that I changed the water just a little bit. I stopped using the seaweed because I believe there's enough in there because we uh, use it basically with every single step. You don't want to overdo it with the hormones. I just stop it now and I'm just going to water this with, uh, with fertilized water. And it's straight off from this state into my routine. So I don't do anything different anymore. I'm just... Uh, watered it. I just created a, a reservoir. It doesn't depend on which day of uh, the week it is, but I like to water uh, my plants on uh, every Wednesday. So from now on, I will check it every Wednesday. If it needs water, uh, I will give it the water that I'm using for all my plants. I can do this fairly easily because I use low levels of fertilizers anyway. So if you don't do that, if you like to fertilize, uh, fertilize your plants fairly high, I would suggest just take it easy. Don't overdo it because we just saw this plant has roots, but not that many. Plus these roots are still kind of adapting. They are ready to get a reservoir. They need to get used to the reservoir now, but we don't want to challenge it too much. So then I would suggest, well, leave it for a few months. If you really see those roots crawling through the pots, then you probably will be, uh, it will be okay to uh, fertilize it as you do with your other plants. I don't, uh, I don't have a pretty mu uh, uh, much experience with that because I don't like to fertilize it with high amounts anyways. So that's, I don't think it's beneficial for, for my plants, at least in the way I grow. So, uh, but that's, that's something you need to think about. But uh, besides that, it should be very easy if you follow these six steps and uh, to get a nice uh, adaptation for your plants. So yeah, I thought before we're going to uh, stop this video, I just wanted to do another last update so far because the last step, step six that I did, uh, that we just saw, I filmed at the beginning of February. It's now halfway March. So it's an one and a half uh, month update. And that means that this plant is uh, in my general orchid watering uh, schedule for one and a half month. And uh, so, yeah, I thought it's nice to do another update and uh, before we're going to finish this uh, video. So I'm going to grab her so we can have a, a last look at those beautiful roots and see how it is doing. I am curious to you guys. Oh, 
oh, this is going to be good. I had no idea, I swear, I swear. I had a uh, sneak peek. But, um, oh, look at this. Look at this. Do you recognize this? There is that mark. I'm so happy I did that mark, but look at that beautiful root. And let's have a look over here. Oi, look at that. There's another one. And do we remember this root, the green root? Well, it's now absolutely starting to branch. It didn't do much in the beginning because uh, obviously it needed some time, but there is definitely a branch. You can see that nice light green. And maybe you did spot it already, but look over there. And not a root. So here we have one, there we have one, and the branch, and obviously the root we kept our eye on. Now let's turn it around. Um, do we have more? No, this is still, uh, it's still alive, as you can see, but it's not branching yet. Maybe it does. It doesn't matter that much because we have quite some new roots starting. I cannot see a new root on the edge of the part beside the ones we just saw. Yeah, this is perfect. This is what we want. This is absolutely working beautifully. So yeah, I'm happy I did wait a little bit before I uh, did uh, uh, release this video on my channel. So we could have another update. One and a half months, you guys. It's beautiful. So once again, I just keep it slow on the fertilizer in general. And I think really it works. You don't need to overdo it. But anyhow, everyone, everybody uh, does uh, has a, a, a different way of growing. Some might be a bit similar, some are quite different. But anyhow, I hope I could uh, answer quite a lot of questions. If I didn't or you have any uh, other questions, please leave them in the comment section below. I really uh, enjoy helping you out wherever I can. So, uh, and or if you want to share anything else, please feel free uh, to use the comment section. And of course, uh, yeah, I hope one day it will bloom. But I think it will take a year or two before this one starts to bloom. But it's fine. It uh, can take the time. It uh, really is settling in here beautifully. So anyhow, you guys, thank you so much for watching. And please, if you like this video, give it a like and share it. I really hope to uh, help uh, as many people out as I can. And uh, for, for now, uh, thank you one more time for watching. And I really hope to see you at one of my next videos. Bye-bye.